Welcome to Stories for Lip Reading. If you haven't used our website before, we suggest you look at our How to Use page before you begin. We hope you enjoy this story, which is called About a Story by Pat Kelly. It has been filmed in two episodes. Here is episode one. About a Story by Pat Kelly. This is the place. It is waiting, holding its breath. Dust motes glitter in the air. Jewel colours from stained glass windows gleam on stones polished by centuries of faithful feet. I wait too. Surely something will happen soon. Perhaps a grey robed monk with a skeletal face will creep from behind the tapestries. Or maybe the last abbess will glide down the aisle beckoning me to follow. But finally I decide to give up. Romsey Abbey won't reveal its secrets today. Maybe a walk in the park will inspire me. I really hope so, as I'm under pressure. In the street, a young woman hurries towards me with a chubby toddler in his pushchair. I wonder what it's like to be a baby. Maybe they have profound thoughts, perhaps even remembering life before birth. Is there inspiration for me there? Desperation is beginning to set in. Entering the Memorial Park, I walk over and sit on an empty bench opposite the statue of a grave young soldier in World War I uniform leading his tired horse. It's warm and peaceful and I'm trying not to doze when I sense movement a pungent smell wafts towards me as an old tramp sits down and settles his filthy rags around him, stretching his legs out. I notice blackened toes protruding from gaping holes in mud-encrusted boots. As he shuffles along the seat towards me, I edge away. Got a light, mate? he croaks. No, sorry. I've lost my vesta, see? Lost it here somewhere. I must have looked puzzled because he explained, you know, to light my fag. Ah, there wasn't much else to say. I've got to find it. My wife gave it to me just before I left said it was lucky and would keep me safe. She'd had my name engraved on it. I daren't go home without it. I started to get up, but a grimy hand in a fingerless glove grabbed my jacket. The old man seemed determined to keep talking. I'm George Turner, he stuck his hand out. Pleased to meet you, George. I reply, ignoring the proffered hand. I I'm afraid I've got to rush off. George was having none of it. I used to come here all the time with my pals. We'd bring the horses down for a bit of a gallop and a good feed on some fresh grass. We were camped up there. He pointed to somewhere invisible in the distance. Course, it wasn't a park then, more of a meadow. A lot different to the Mile End Road, I can tell you. I met my wife here, my Mary. She's a local girl. That's lovely. Best to humour him, I suppose. We got married up there, in the Abbey, just before I was sent off to the front. Got a letter a few weeks later telling me she was in the family way. Had our boy christened there too, called him Alfred. I haven't seen him since, nor my lovely Mary. 
He wiped his eye with his filthy hand. What about you? You married? I was, I swallowed, as Ellen's face floated into my mind. The doctors couldn't save her or the baby. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that, lad. I just nodded and stood to walk away. Do me a favour, please, mate. If you find my Vesta, could you leave it somewhere for me? Hide it in that bush. He pointed towards a laurel bush next to the bench. I'm always down here, so I'll pick it up. Ta. I nodded and strolled off.